Welcome, everyone. Today we have a special seminar. We don't have external speakers. We have some students who are coming to speak. Um, but before I introduce them, I want to ask if there are any announcements. OK, well, I have a couple announcements. Um, I wanted to let you know that um, senior research oral presentations will be tomorrow, Tuesday, in the 1954 room from 1 to 4 PM. <laughs> And next Tuesday, from 2 to 4 in ABS, our seniors will be presenting their posters. Uh, it's a really good opportunity for st other students to see what, what work our seniors have been doing. Um, and it's really impressive. So I would encourage you to come to either part or all of those, those presentations. OK. Um, so today, we'll have uh, four students to talk about their, their summer experiences. Um, this, this encompasses a broad range, and we, we're only representing four people today. Um, but on working waterfronts, or research, or uh, sailing expeditions. Um, and this is really an opportunity for their peers to hear about all the amazing opportunities that are available to you. Um, and what I'd like you to pay attention to is not only what they did, uh, but also how they found those positions. Um, and what they liked and didn't like, and what you would like about uh, work. Again, this, this is an opportunity for you to see where you can go with your career, whether that's during, during summers or uh, after you graduate here. Um, so I will introduce each speaker. Um, and I'd like to save questions for the end. The, the presentations will be relatively short. We will have four of them. Um, you can give a nice little round of applause for each person, and then um, as the new speaker comes up, we will save all questions for the end when um, all, all four of our presenters will be up front. Is everybody with me? All right, good. Um, so our four, first speaker is Jenny Striovi. Uh, come on up, Jenny. And good. Welcome to Jenny. Thank you. Can everyone hear me all right? OK, sweet. So for my summer internships, I'm talking about the past um, two summers. So one of them being Muskungus Bay Aquaculture and Cook Aquaculture. So I'm going to talk about, excuse me. Uh, I'm going to talk about Muskungus Bay Aquaculture first. That was in the summer of 2021. I worked there from early May to late July. And I'm going to point out some of these locations on this map. So primarily for the first three months, I worked in West Bath, Brunswick area, and that's where the oyster nursery is. That's where the internship primarily takes place. Um, Muskungus Bay Aquaculture also has a farm located in Edgecombe, which is in that middle point there. And I had a couple of days where I worked there, helped sort through their larger, fully grown oysters. And then lastly, towards the beginning of that internship, I got a tour of their hatchery facility located in Bremen, Maine, that most right point. OK, so this image is showing what are called the flupsies, otherwise known as upwellers. Now, this was taken at the beginning of the season, so not all eight flupsies are out. Those flupsies are what you can see as like a panelized dock with all those trap door looking like slots. And so when you pull those up, you're going to get these bins underneath. And so each flupsy holds 10 bins. And so with eight flupsies in total at peak season, that's 80 bins. All of those bins hold millions of juvenile oysters that we had to maintain throughout the season. Now towards the left side here, it's not shown in the photo, unfortunately, but there's a motor that helps bring in water and have continuous water flow. And that way, water flow goes through the main part of the flupsy itself and then through the bins. And the bins at the bottom also have like a mesh lining to allow water flow between the marina where the nursery was and the actual water flow. And then one of the daily tasks I had to do at the nursery was to take the bins out of the water. This is our bin lifter that we had. And we would have to take it to our freshwater hose station to wash them with fresh water. This was to get rid of any dirt, or feces that the oysters were making to reduce an, an anoxic environment. This was especially crucial as the oysters grew larger in size. 
So this is what the juvenile oysters look like fresh out of the hatchery, super tiny, about one, one millimeter in size. And then as they start to grow, this is kind of our hand grading sort of setup. So as they start to grow, you got to sort them out by size. And that also allows them to get separated into separate bins so they have more room to grow. So in the setup, you have this wooden box with a mesh bottom. You put it in this larger bin full of water, and you're just shaking it to let the smaller oysters fall through the mesh. And we have mesh for all different sizes of oysters. And then you have the bigger ones left on top. And then here's a photo showing like one to two millimeter oysters versus a three millimeter oyster. So that's the result of hand grading. And then throughout the season, and this was sort of my favorite part of the internship throughout the three months, watching the oysters grow, it was surprising how fast they grew. These are about six to eight millimeters in size. And then this is one of the larger ones I happened to come across randomly one day. This is definitely like 13 plus millimeters. And at this point, they would get sent off to farmers that order seed from Muscungus Bay Aquaculture for their own farms or get sent to um, the company's farm itself. And so this next image, this is just more for fun. In the flyer that was sent by Professor Cleveland when I signed up for the internship, it specifically states that you better like working outside all of the time. So this is my emphasis. Uh, you can get a croc tan if you wear crocs on the docks. So just heads up. Okay, now moving on to Cook Aquaculture. Now, I came on to Cook Aquaculture um, as a deckhand, and primarily they have circular pens along the coast in down east Maine, and they treat salmon for sea lice. And I'll kind of elaborate as I go through my photos. So, for the locations I primarily worked in, we had Eastport, which is all the way to the right, you have Machias Port right here, and then you have Jones Port at the bottom. So this is the Pauline T. This is the vessel that I worked on as a deckhand. Lots of machinery happening. This, these photos were taken at a dry dock in Rockland, just doing maintenance on propellers and whatnot. And then in the first couple of days, like orientation, I primarily learned how to operate cranes and hand signaling, which was something I'd only learned through a textbook in seamanship. So it was really fun to get hands-on experience, although very confusing because the levers on that um, crane don't seem intuitive for the direction of how a crane moves. So that was the tricky part to learn. And then next I have images of action shots during salmon treatment days. So the day starts out with, so not shown in the photo, there would be a vessel on the left side of us that has another crane that is pulling in this cork line, which is the orange and yellow balls coming in. It's wrangling in all the salmon so that it goes into our hoses that are kind of submerged in the water. And that kind of sucks them up to our giant salmon steel slide, which is shown here. So they kind of come up, and then they go down the slide in an oval fashion. And this next image will show like how we're treating the salmon. So this is another action shot. You can see the salmon's going down. And as you can see, they're getting sprayed with warm water. The salmon are getting treated to get rid of sea lice, which kind of is like a parasite to them and kind of gnaws on their flesh and is not great for the seafood industry because ultimately the salmon is going to be sold off for seafood. And so this is what the sea lice look like. They, as they get removed, they go through grating through the slide and they get kind of brought down to the sea lice conveyor, which they get dropped off along with algae into this bin and we take this bin of algae and sea lice concoction and send it off to another vessel to get disposed of. Although, fun fact, it gets reused as fertilizer. So these are all sea lice of different life stages. I got to help the fish health department a little bit on doing sea lice counts or just identifying what life stage they were at. And so kind of going back to my crane training a little bit, um, that was crucial because we have this exit chute at the end of the slide where the salmon return to the pens. And so this had to be brought up and down after every cage. So it was important to use my seamanship skills to make sure that the shackles are right for the maximum holding power. 
And then last but not least, we know how to have fun on the boat. We had this kiddie pool. This was some of my crew. And after a long day's work, we chilled in the pool and cooled off after some hot days. That is what I have. Thank you, Jenny. Um, I know I said save questions for the end, but are they actually called Bupsies? Yes. Okay. The answer is yes for those of you. Um, so we'll, um, I'll just transition over the slides, and our next speaker is Noel Tavares, who did an international research project that she'll talk about. Thank you, Noel. Hello, everyone. My name is Noel Tavares, and I'm a junior studying marine biology and small vessel operations, also minoring in oceanography. And this summer, I was chosen to be a FIRES RU student. So FIRES stands for Philippines International Research Experience for Students. And a quick little overview of the internship. It is paid. You get to spend two months in the Philippines and you work alongside a mentor from the Silliman University. Um, you're either working within the biology department or the marine laboratory and you are a mentee so you learn from your mentor um, how to complete your research and then when you leave and go back to the States you're the lead author on a manuscript if you choose to pursue publication. And so for field work, um, there's around five students or four other students that I went with that were FIRES RU students, and so I was able to help them alongside their field work. So that consisted of going to um, the fish market and collecting crab samples, or going into the woods, hiking through the forest and collecting goby samples, or going to rote known stations and snorkeling. For my field work, um, I actually studied the Visayan spotted deer, which is in the left picture, and it's one of the most endangered mammals in the world. So my field work consisted of going to Centrop, which stands for the Center for Tropical Conservation Studies, and that's where the breeding facilities are held for my deer. And so um, when I went there, I was able to watch um, the people at the facility capture the deer and take DNA samples, which then I brought back to the uh, lab. So the Silimon Molecular Lab, it's quite small. Um, the entire lab is pictured to the far right. Um, it was me, my mentor, and then four other people working the lab together, so it was a quite tight space. But um, pictured in the top left is me giving a presentation, my initial proposal presentation to all the other FIRES students and the mentors. Um, and then I just have pictures of the thermocycler in our lab space. And so during the week, you would work Monday through Friday, um, usually 8 to 4, or later on when we got, like, we really had a crunch. We worked from 8 to 10 or 8 to 8. So there are long days. And every week is followed by a deliverable. So like your first deliverable would be an introduction or your methods. And so each week you're not only working the lab, but you have um, projects to do alongside of that. And on the weekends, it's pretty fun because you get to explore the Philippines. And so we actually went on three different scuba diving trips. We explored Apo Island and a local beach. And then um, on the weekends that we weren't diving, um, me and the other students, we made trips to um, waterfalls, we made trips to different lakes, we went hiking, we had camping trips. Um, we did a lot and it was, it's really easy to kind of coordinate that with your PIs and your mentors and they'll help you. And so after all the data analysis and the research was completed in the Philippines, I went back home and learned how to use RStudio to complete data analysis um, when I got back to the States. And then after that was completed, I started my first draft of my manuscript. And then I was able to go to the SACNES National Diversity in STEM Conference in Puerto Rico this year. And so that's a four-day conference. It focuses on undergraduate studies. And I was able to um, uh, get my abstract accepted. So I was able to present a poster there, which was a really amazing time. And I met a lot of interesting people. And it's a great way to network and really like get into the science community. And so right now, I'm actually working on the second draft of my manuscript, and I will have that complete at the end of December, and we're hoping to publish to a Philippine journal at the end of February. And so if you're interested in becoming a FIRES REU student, or if you're interested in this internship at all, 
Um, you can use the QR code, you can scan that and it'll take you right to the application process. But if you have any questions about the experience, you can feel free to contact me. Or if you have any questions about the um, program for this summer, I also link the email here. Thank you. Thank you, Noelle. Um, can people scan that if, from where you are? All right, we can make it available, or you can get in touch with Noelle. Um, so our next speaker is Nico Palu. Um, Nico is going to talk about his experience working on the Bowdoin this past summer. How's that? All right. So my experience is something, uh, thank you, something rather close to home. And you, you may know we have this wonderful schooner. And uh, I happen to be encouraged by some of my classmates to take the CR214 boat and cruise um, as it is a, a course that is offered here. So I did this just this past summer. And it's, uh, it lasts two months. And uh, it's a really good experience. I'm going to show you, show you some photos from, from, the, uh, from those two months. All right, so the um, first couple of weeks are all about maintaining the boat and getting the boat ready for shipyard. Um, we spend a lot of time cleaning, sanding, uh, moving things that were off the boat back onto the boat. And uh, it's a very good opportunity if you really like sanding or you're really good at sanding. You, you, you may want to do this. Uh, once we're underway, we go to Belfast at um, Front Street Shipyard. Um, thankfully, they're nice enough there to allow us students to do the work on our own boat in their yard. And uh, so this is from the trip over. And as you can see, um, we get the boat lined up in the slip for the travel lift. And there we go. The boat is out of the water. It's almost like magic. Um, this is pretty impressive for us uh, Ocean Studies students. This, uh, uh, this past summer, it was about 83% of the students that were on the boat and um, were Ocean Studies. And we got to enjoy some all sorts of interesting things that you find on the bottom of a boat after you know, a year of being in the water. Um, we got the, the scunge and the scooge and gunch. We have to sort of define or make up these terms. And it's really quite beautiful, actually, to see all of the things that are attracted to the hull of a boat. Anyway, so on to shipyard work. Uh, this is where we spend a lot more time sanding. Uh, it's about 90% preparation and then 10% actually applying the coats of whatever we're going to be applying, so paint, varnish, that sort of thing. And it's, it's a very long process, but you end up with a boat that's looking better than possibly the, the best the boat has looked in the past year. There's us um, once, once we were done in the shipyard. During the duration of, of the course, you keep a journal, which is very important um, because it's if, if you're going into the maritime industry, it's good to keep record of things. And um, uh, shout out to Honey Zuber Stevens for this amazing drawing of the schooner boat. Um, you keep a daily log as well as complete uh, assignments, drawings like this, um, just to make sure your, your knowledge is there. Now, I can share with you so something where my knowledge wasn't was uh, line handling. I had a little bit of experience sailing on schooners. Um, as you can see, these are Ballantine coils, which are very important. Um, I managed to screw up one of them on our first sail, and my, my schooner friends may have criticized me a little bit because of that, but I eventually was the one who would go around and inspect all of the Ballantine coils to make sure they were of high quality. So that's that. Getting out and sailing the boat is probably the highlight, and you get a lot of experience um, navigating, working with lines, tying knots, and such. Um, of course, you'll get some time at the helm, too, which is fun. And uh, I do have a question for all of you, or possibly the world. Why do we have a 3D mode 
on this chart plotter here because I still haven't, I haven't found out how that could be any bit useful. Um, that, that's something that I thought was pretty hilarious because we didn't know where we were at that point. Okay, so the cruise. Now, this past uh, summer, the, the cruise part of the cruise, the time where we were away from the dock, uh, was about two weeks. Um, the upcoming cruise, it should be a little bit longer. Um, here we are anchored in, um, off of Vinyl Haven, and you can see that's uh, Captain Will um, at the top of the, the foremast. Um, I'm sure he's, he may or may not be clipped in. We'll see. If you like going aloft, this, this could be a good opportunity for you. If you don't, don't worry. I, I don't tend to like going aloft. Anyway, so the, uh, the navigation skills continue with uh, probably get to, to try out a sextant. Um, you'll go on many, many small voyages. Uh, for us, this past summer, we stayed along the coast of Maine. I personally think that it doesn't really get much better than the coast of Maine in the summer. Um, it's not always a whole lot of wind, um, but as you can see, this was um, a good opportunity to get into the, into the habit of standing watch at the bow, at the helm, doing boat checks, making sure we aren't sinking, and uh, as well as getting out and doing a little bit of volunteer work. You see the, uh, the, fo the photo at the, at the bottom with us as a group is um, uh, when we did a, an island cleanup, so we all volunteered and we picked up trash, which is much more fun than it sounds, I promise. Now, here's a, a pretty dramatic photo that's probably one of the most uh, um, memorable days since that was our overnight sail, where we went from Rockland to Portland. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I have, I have much else to say. But I do want to give special thanks to everyone that made the trip possible. All of our captains, should also mention Cindy Willis, um, did the cooking for us. She's excellent. And uh, all of my schooner friends, some of which you may know. And you should definitely talk to us if you're interested. So I'm sure many of you, particularly in the SVO program, uh, will find this uh, very beneficial. There's lots of good skills you can learn. So that's that. to go to the end so you could see all the people. It's good. And I, w I will say my experience on ships says that the cook drives morale on the ship. Everything, everything circles around food. Um, okay, so our last student speaker today will be, <laughs> will be the illustrious and famous Aubrey Mitchell. Um, I can find yours, who also had a research project, but here locally in Maine. Take it away. I know. Okay, so can everyone hear me okay? Okay. Um, I was part of the RU program at Bigelow Laboratory in Booth Bay, Maine. So that's like two hours south from here. Um, and it is a 10-week program. It is paid, and I you work... Um, on an individual research project with a mentor and you're just like immersed in like tons of experience. You are part of roundtable discussions, seminars, field trips, laboratory outreach and social events. Okay, so this was, we went on three research cruises this summer and each cruise we collected data or we collected samples for a bunch of different departments in the laboratory, um, including uh, nutrient samples, we did chlorophyll samples, we did viral bacterial samples, and um, we also were had the opportunity to kind of be like the manager of the cruise, so we made sure all samples were collected. We had the opportunity to run the winch for the CTD. Um, we also saw a lot of like wildlife out there, and one of the, um, senior researchers let us eat um, some tina fours, so that was pretty cool. Um, and yeah, that's me. 
Um, and then we did some laboratory outreach. So we had to, it wasn't voluntary, it was kind of forced, but we had to walk in the 4th of July parade in Booth Bay Harbor. And there was just like tons of people there. And we um, were advertising for the open house that they do every year. And we had around, I think, 300 people there this past summer. And there's Phoebe in the left doing a density lab. Um, but we each ran a station and we taught from all ages just what we're doing at the lab. There's so many different projects going on. So it was just a great opportunity to um, show what actually is going on in the lab. And we went on a couple field trips as groups or as individuals, but they were able to rent out the botanical gardens in Booth Bay, and we were allowed, it was just us there, so we just like ran around for like three hours, it was awesome. And then <laughs> we went to the beach. <laughs> we went to the beach a bunch of times, we went mini golfing, there's just so many fun opportunities in Booth Bay Harbor. Um, and then for my laboratory experience, so my project, I was developing biomarkers and molecular markers for the larval stages of the blue mussel. And in the left and the right, that was a blue mussel that I had to dissect. So I had to go up to the Down East Institute and collect adult samples and as well as my larval samples. But the key thing was that I had to dissect the digestive tract, which is on, in the right-hand picture, it's the right side of the muscle, so I had to cut that off to um, make sure there was no contamination if the, uh, if the muscle had ingested any larval or larvae. So, and then in the middle is a gel that I ran, um, just testing one of my primer sets that I made. And then lastly, like as the program goes on, you're developing many different um, presentations and then that was a poster I made for my poster session at the end we are throughout the program you are presenting like you develop an intro methods discussion whatnot and then at the end of the sem at the end of the summer you present a poster um, to a bunch of the senior researchers that are at the lab um, but it, it was a great opportunity it was paid which was awesome and like you just, even though it's local, and I know Maine, it sounds boring, but it actually is a lot more fun than you might think it is. So it is a great opportunity. And you can apply at the Bigelow Laboratory website if you're interested. Thank you, Aubrey. I'm gonna ask our, our four speakers to come up to the front. And as with all of our seminars, we have the opportunity to open up questions to the audience. And I, I would really encourage the students to ask really any number of questions that you might have about um, what the students liked or didn't like about their internships, how they got them, um, how, how to get those opportunities, um, how it relates to maybe your senior research or not. Um, I, I'm going to ask for some help from Dr. Whitaker to run the microphone. So I will just ask that um, if you have a question for a specific speaker that you address it to them so they know who to answer. Otherwise, we can just kind of open it up to the group. So my question, wow, sorry guys. My question is for Noelle. Um, I'm also going pretty far away for my internship this summer, so what would you say the pros and cons of being in the Philippines were? Um, that's a really good question. Well, I think for pros, like being in the Philippines, you really get like immersed in their culture, and I had never been like so far away from home before, and so it was a, like a huge like step, because I had never met these people before, and I just hopped on a plane, and all of a sudden I was in the Philippines with a bunch of strangers. And so like it's definitely like nerve wracking, but like the whole time you're just thinking like, wow, like this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. And like, it's just amazing, like being able to be somewhere um, like so different from our culture and just kind of like stand back and like see how 
they live and like what they do and it's just like it's really helpful like in like the science context because my mentors know a lot of different things that like my PIs from the states don't know and vice versa so it's a lot of like teaching everyone and just learning it's like a big learning environment for everyone so I think wherever you're going you're gonna enjoy it there wasn't really any cons honestly except for like travel but that's about it Uh, this is for Aubrey. Uh, working at the um, Big O Labs, did you have any connection with the Booth Bay Sea Science Center at all? Or yeah, so we had we actually hosted the kids at one of our facilities, not in the lab but adjacent to the lab, and we um, they actually came to the open house and they they usually all day do a lot of like science stuff, but yes, we did see them quite often. Um, I think this will apply for everybody, but maybe Nico, but I was curious if you could, um, how many internships did you apply for to then kind of yield the one you got? Well, for me personally, just these past two summers, I kind of just applied to the first one. So like I just applied to Muscungus Bay and it just worked out. And same thing with Cook Aquaculture. I will say with Cook Aquaculture, I think some networking relations were involved because I was roommates with Olivia Harriman, who's in VOT. She had already co-opted with them. She put a good word in for me, and I had interviewed with her captain. So there was a lot going on for that. Um, for me, I have just a coincidence for somebody, and I didn't have any summer plans, so it just worked out really well for me. Um, I really, really wanted to get this internship, and it was, it was, it's very competitive, so I really only applied to this one internship in hopes that I would get it, which definitely is not the right thing to do, but <laughs> it worked out, so. Other questions out there? For those of you that did like research, are you planning on doing any follow-up research in the future regarding related topics? So for my research, um, it's kind of confusing because like the data that I got in the Philippines, since I'm working with an endangered animal, I wasn't able to kind of like bring the data into the states. So my manuscript kind of had to be changed into like a methods paper. So the next project that's going to be happening in this following year, um, they asked me to be an additional PI to the project, which will be like a further encapsulation of the entire deer population in Centrop instead of just 10 individuals that I studied. So I don't really know what that will entail, but hopefully I'll be able to continue on with the project. And then for me, I'm still working on it here at MMA, so... Hopefully I'll get some headway and then I hope to continue it over the summer here. Other questions? Um, kind of going along with just what Alec had just said, um, but has the research you guys have done um, like influenced what you plan on doing for your senior research or what you've already done for your senior research? For me, yeah. I really enjoyed doing genetic studies this past summer. I like how like if there's an issue, there's like you know kind of how to fix it. So I really enjoyed doing it and I hope to continue with that. Um, it definitely taught me that I don't really like genetics but I'm glad that I was given the opportunity. I remember when I, like, looking at the list of different projects, they were all, like, marine-based, like, fish-based, and then when I got the email that I was gonna be doing deer, I was like, 
oh no, like this is not what I signed up for. But I'm so glad that I did it because it's like science is very like diverse. So like all the skills that I learned, I could easily like change that and, and do it for senior research. But it, I'm not really interested in that, but I'm glad that I got the experience in doing that. Now, while I didn't do research, I will say my experience with Muscungus Bay aquaculture did influence my senior research because I liked the idea of working with shellfish. And I recall in the middle of July during that season, we had that three days in a row of 90 degree weather and then the water was warming a lot. And so we had a concern with all the oysters in our bins, like, oh, how are these juvenile oysters gonna survive that? They ended up being fine. And so I was like, oh, let me do some sort of warming and shellfish senior research, although I chose to do mussels because they're just easier to acquire here. my last one guys I promise um, out of all of the classes you've taken so far at MMA which ones do you think were the most helpful and the ones you used the most during your internships I guess I'll answer this first I think zoology just to have the basic understanding of shellfish going into Muscungus Bay aquaculture I like them all <laughs> um, I think when I was doing like my dis dissections of the adults, I think zoology was the most helpful, but like prior to this, I really had no experience with handling DNA or RNA, so I think like I think we did one lab that was with DNA when we were like freshmen, but I did not remember anything about it. Yeah, I would say like genetics wise, like obviously we haven't taken genetics yet, so it was like a really big challenge like kind of like conceptualizing everything that I had to know that I didn't know, but kind of like just little things from like all the classes we've taken, definitely with like how all of the different professors prefer like how we write lab reports, I think that was definitely very helpful. And I would say a lot of the classes that I'm taking now to prep me for senior research, um, even though I didn't take it before I left, I can tell that they're, they're like influencing like my senior research already, so like. Okay, thank you so much. I'd like to have one more round of applause for our student speakers, thank you. And I'll make you stand up here while I make my last announcement. <laughs> um, next week, we do have an outside speaker, Christine West, who will be talking about mud flats. Um, so good luck with the rest of the semester. We'll see you here next week. Thank you. <laughs>